श्री टी एन मनोहरन पद्मश्री अवॉर्डी आर पास प्रेसिडेंट एंड द मोस्ट बिलव चार्टेड अकाउंटेंट ऑन टू द डायस आई रिक्वेस्ट टीम सिका Manoharan sir, the stage is all yours. Board of Studies of ICI, Hyderabad branch of SARC of ICI, and Hyderabad Sikasa, the regional council member Changal Reddy and his team, the Hyderabad branch chairman and his dedicated managing committee members, then chairman and co-chairman of Sikasa and the office bearers of Sikasa for organizing such a memorable and wonderful program spread over two days yesterday and today. And I'm delighted and immensely pleased to see all of you, these young, bright, enthusiastic faces. I'm sure by the end of today, after these two days of deliberations, you will go back enriched and with memories that would last for your lifetime benefiting you in every facet of your profession. Programs of this nature may not build a future for you, but it will build you for the future. That is the purpose and objective of such a program. I must also congratulate you for two reasons. First and foremost, for being born in India, because 18th and 19th century belong to Europe, 20th century belong to USA, 21st century must belong to India. And who is going to make it happen? All of you are going to make it happen. And you are going to see that happening as you emerge out as chartered accountants and carry on the journey of your profession. So from that perspective, first reason to congratulate you. The second reason why I must congratulate you is, if you look at the global population of 750 uh, crores, that is 7.5 billion, India's population is 1.3 billion, which means that out of every seven persons in the world, one must be always Indian. 
and uh, look at the demographic composition of the globe. US is a stagnated population. Europe, Australia is declining population. Japanese and Chinese population is aging population. It is only India's population which is young population. Less than, less than 20 years, 41% of this 1.3 billion are less than 20 years. 20 years to 59 years, 50% of 1.3 billion population. And 60 and above senior citizens are only 9% of the population. The average median of India's population is 27.1 years age age of the population. It's going to become 29, uh, maybe by 2025. But this is the prime stage when, as youth, not just India is awaiting your arrival as a chartered accountant, the whole globe is awaiting your arrival because the opportunities are galore. Today we are about 300,000 chartered accountants in 1.3 billion, hardly 3 lakhs are the chartered accountant population. Out of that, maybe 2.5 lakhs are in India. About 50,000 are spread across the globe in different countries and continents. And the uh, Indian chartered accountant is respected and received and he can settle down anywhere in the globe. That I have seen it myself as I have traveled to many countries. So the, your opportunity, your future is not just India, across the globe. You may think, why should I leave India? Fine, it is left to you. But whenever I traveled abroad and met any of my erstwhile students who are well settled there, sometimes I used to find that they used to converse with a sense of guilt. What is the guilt? They used to tell me, sir, all said and done, I am not within India. So I used to tell them, it is not necessary that you should be within India, but it is necessary that India should be within you. So that, so that wherever you are, whatever you do, you should bring laurels to your country that an Indian has done this, Indian has contributed this, Indian has achieved this. And that's how you can make the flag of your country fly high everywhere and anywhere that you travel. So with this preamble, now let me come to the purpose for which I am here. I know you are all getting enriched with intense technical analysis of divergent topics, student presenting papers, you know, learned professionals sharing their expert views, so on and so forth. But this session, I have been asked to deliver a few thoughts that will motivate you, that will regenerate you, that will enable you to discover the potential within you, and also unravel as to what is ahead of you. So that is the objective with which I am standing before you. So let me spend maybe another 40 minutes or so, or 45 minutes or so, sharing few other thoughts, validated by live examples, so that that lingers in your mind as you face every challenging task and take up your challenging exams, which should not frighten you, but you should be able to embrace them with a sense of belonging, passion and overcome because you must always believe what is in you is much stronger than what encounters you in life. If you get to that situation of discovering the inner energy within you, then nothing can challenge you, nothing can make you fear. When an egg is taken, if it is broken from outside, one life ends. If the same egg is broken from inside, one life begins. Isn't it? So if all the value system, the knowledge, skills ignite your inner energy, then that is much stronger, more powerful than any of the hurdles, bottlenecks that will encounter you in life and you will be able to easily surpass them, overcome them, 
conquer them, scale them, transcend them, and accomplish what you want to accomplish. So the first bullet point I want to share with you is dream big. Every one of you have the inherent right to dream what you want to achieve in life. And when you exercise that right, that privilege, dream big. Don't just dream ordinary. All of you have joined a CA course. Necessarily, all of you are wanting to pass CA. But don't stop with that as your dream. Even while dreaming to pass CA, dream to pass CA with an All India rank. Nobody can prevent you from dreaming to qualify with a rank. But how many of you have the courage, self-confidence to dream that I must qualify with a rank? How many of you? Can you raise your hands? Yes, I am happy that so many hands are going up. But I would like to visualize a scenario where every hand, every person in this hall, except those who have already passed, raise their hands that I want to be a rank holder. What do you lose by dreaming big? Nothing. You cannot be worse off. You can always be better off. Isn't it? By dreaming big. So learn to dream big. In a gathering of students, if you ask, here we don't have time for interaction, for, otherwise I can carry the mic and ask what is your dream. But I, I have done it in many forums, many jurisdictions. Let me share, due to time constraint, few dreams of few students. So that if there is a slot in your brain, or your brain has not conceptualized any dream for you, that gets planted today, that seed is planted today, maybe it will shape, it will erupt one day into a reality. One student said, so why should I, after qualifying, go to five companies for seeking job? The way I qualify, with the kind of marks, rank, knowledge, skill sets, empowerment, Instead of my knocking the doors of a company, five companies should send letters inviting me to join their company. That is my dream. That is my dream. And let me tell you, I've seen it happening to some of the students. They are being invited. I've even seen cases where invitation is received from top groups, industrial groups in the country, by a CA student, and that student saying, sorry, I have different plans, I am not going to join you. That is possible. It has happened. Another student said, why should I be a job seeker? I should establish my own office. I should establish my own you know, business or my own entrepreneurial organization. And down the line, I should be provider of jobs. I should recruit hundreds of people. That is another dream, another kind of a dream. Yet another person said, how long I can be reading history? I should create history. My name should be part of history. And by the time I finish my talk, you will come across many names who have created history. So you need not Search for examples. I'll be giving plenty of examples in the next 40 minutes. Yet another student said, how long my signature can continue to be a signature? One day it should transform into an autograph. <laughs> Possible or not? Possible. Not that only you have to become a film personality, sports personality, or a political leader for your signature to become an autograph. The emerging days are going to be altogether different. Opinion makers, social activists, professionals who contribute to transformation of the society and economy are going to be construed as celebrities. Their signatures are going to become autographs. 
So that is the future that awaits your arrival. Yet another person said, I want to make my parents proud. Somebody else said, I want to make my society be proud of me. Somebody else said, I want the nation to be proud of me. All these are all possible, my dear students. These are all part of the journey and the capability of your dreaming. So dream big. That is the first bullet point. The second bullet point I want to say is, any dream can become a reality over a period of time only if you possess, cherish self-confidence. Self-confidence is absolutely essential. Even if the whole world believes in you, if you don't have self-confidence, nothing can be achieved. The converse is also true. Even if the whole world does not believe in you, but if you believe in yourself, you can accomplish anything and everything in life. So that is the power of self-confidence. That is the power of self-confidence. Let me give you the story of a young girl who was born on 9th of January, 1985. Uh, oh, no, sorry, 9th January, 2000. 9th January 2000, a girl was born in a remote village called Ding, D-H-I-N-G, Ding. Today she is called Ding Express. Who is that? Yes, Himadas. She went to Finland. Actually, she was the fifth child of a farmer in a village, remote village in Assam. And the coach, the school PT master saw her playing football. And the way she was moving in the football ground, swiftly dribbling the ball, and wherever the ball was moving past by the opponent team, she was there. The speed with which she could reach out to the ball was amazing. So he said, you seem to be blessed with a feet that is flying, not just running. So why don't you participate in athletic competitions? She started participating. She was started winning. Then somebody said, this girl should go to Gauhati Sports Academy Training Center. But there is no money to undergo all that. But somehow the coach could get some sponsorship, persuade her parents to send her to Gauhati. Somebody sponsored her food because she needs nutrition. Somebody sponsored her track suit and she could not afford to buy a shoe. So somebody had to donate the running shoes to her, second hand, already used to shoes. She started practicing and in 2018, July, she went to Finland to participate in the under-19 World Athletics Competition. World Athletics Competition. Now in athletic events also, like in tennis or any, you know, cricket, uh, World Cup tournament, all that, you have league, quarter final, semi final, all those jargons, depending on each sport you have, filtering those who cannot be fit to run in the final race, isn't it? So heats happened, so she got selected, passed through different hurdles and reached the top eight to run in the final. So that day, 400 meter sprint, she is one of the eight runners in lane four. First 200 meters, nobody takes notice of her. And 200 to 300 meters, slowly she started overtaking. American, European. 300 meters to 400 meters, the commentator start screaming, Himada seems to be making a progress. She seems to be overtaking people. And then he, he spontaneously shouts, no Indian has so far taken any medal in track events in global competition. That he says it. No Indian has ever taken a medal 
in track events. But by then, Himadas zooms and overtakes the African, everybody else, and crosses the finishing line ahead of others in 51 seconds, I mean 51.47 seconds, less than 52 seconds, 400 meters. And then the commentator screams, Himadas creates history. Imadas creates history. She is the first Indian to bag a gold medal in the world athletics competition. She did not require, when PV Sindhu won silver medal in Rio Olympics in 2016, in shuttle badminton, the description she bagged was, first Indian woman to win a silver medal. She needed three let words, first Indian woman, because there were men who have already won silver medal for India in Olympics. So she was the first Indian woman. But Hima Das required only two words to describe. First Indian. First Indian, not Indian woman. Even no men have won the gold medal. Any medal for that matter. So that is what I mean when I say create history. So, that is the kind of self-confidence she had to zoom past others and win a gold medal and bring pride to the country. The story doesn't end here. The story doesn't end here. Today, you Google in your mobile app and ask the question, who is the goodwill ambassador for Adidas shoe manufacturing company, global company for India, the answer will be Himadas. So, what does it mean? It means a girl who could not afford to buy a sports shoe for herself is today the brand ambassador for the largest shoe manufacturing global company in the world. That is what self-confidence can do to you. The next bullet point I want to share with you is disciplined training takes you miles ahead of the competition. Disciplined training. In anything and everything you do, disciplined training. Even this three years article ship training, those who take it with all the discipline at their command, in terms of following punctuality, attending to the works assigned, undergoing variety of exposures by accompanying the senior partner or the senior student under whom you are working and following, observing, taking notes, jotting down what is the learning out of execution of a particular work, client interaction, human interface, how the billing is done, how the collection is made, every facet of your office on which you undergo, the kind of administration, management, interpersonal skills, everything, every minute is a learning experience if you look, look at it from that perspective. So that will happen only if you have discipline. I asked a US professor, today I find visiting US, you know, in the once upon a time, I found Indian students were the most migrant students in any of the foreign universities be it Australia, Canada, or US. But today, that is not the scenario. US uh, is dominated by Chinese students. Australia, Canada, everywhere Chinese students are coming to empower themselves. So, I used to ask her, now that you have the good number of population of Chinese and Indian students, what is the difference between the two? She said Indian students are brilliant, Chinese students are disciplined. So, that day it occurred to me, when brilliance can be combined with the discipline, what miraculous results Indian students can bring. <laughs> Wonderful results they can bring. So, we should always pick up what others have, which we admire. We should never become complacent that we are the best. No doubt, even if you are the best, look for something which others possess, which we are not good at pick it up and blend it with your strength, then you become a transformational personality 
who is capable of achieving what you want to achieve. So from that perspective, disciplined training can take you far ahead of the competition. Let me give you an example. Your own city produced PV Sindhu. And uh, PV Sindhu, I just now mentioned, she won silver in Rio Olympics. After that, st she started winning many tournaments. That is history. She has won many medals, many titles in many championship. But I want to take, because I have to drive home my point of disciplined training, just to take 2018 alone, the calendar year, because for sports it is calendar year, not financial year like Income Tax Act. So January to December 2018, you just see the journey of PV Sindhu. She has participated in many tournaments, but in seven tournaments, like Asian Games, Commonwealth Games, Indonesia Open, you see series of championships, she reached final. Successively, she reached final. But in the final, unfortunately, she lost. So, when you lose final, what is the medal given to you? Silver. So, one tournament, silver. Second tournament, silver. Third tournament, silver. Fourth tournament, always after, fourth, I mean, third tournament, fourth tournament onwards, whenever she went to final, the print media will set the press set, fonts, you know, message. They'll keep it ready to fill the gap. They used to set, PV Sindhu settles for silver. Before the match itself, they started keeping it ready. Anyway, that is what is going to happen. We'll print it as it is. Fourth tournament also, yes. Fifth also, yes. Actually, she became silver Sindhu. <laughs> Seventh match also, silver. Then only one tournament was pending. December 16th, 2018 was a very prestigious BWF World Tour Finals Tournament. In that, ironically, no Indian has ever won the title so far. Be it men or women, nobody has won the title so far. She reaches final. Press is ready. <laughs> what? Silver. <laughs> this shakes her up. She said, what is this jinx? What is preventing me from crossing this milestone? Why am I like this? Then she remembers, at eight years, when my parents took me and left to Gopichand Training Academy, what kind of a disciplined training I underwent? What are all I sacrificed? My most favorite food, Hyderabadi Dam Biryani. <laughs> I never touched, only for the sake of, you know, taking my game to the next level. I did not touch my mobile because the rest of the world does not exist for me. What all I am telling is your checklist for CA final exams. <laughs> you know, these are all should be in your checklist. <laughs> so, <laughs> all that sacrifices, Actually, for others, it will look like sacrifice. These are all your basic fundamental rules, foundation. Because if for you, when you are working on a task, working on making your dream a reality, those few months, if the rest of the world does not exist for you, you get into that mode. After you achieve what you achieve, the whole world will look at you and applaud you for what you have achieved. Is that not worth that sacrifice? That is what you will have to ask yourself. So she shook herself and worked in with that discipline. Practiced, trained herself, walked in with a sense of, again, self-confidence. BWF World Tour Final, 16th December 2018. She smashed the Japanese opponent in state games, 21-19, 21-17, and lifted the cup. Gold. She won the gold medal. And 
and the media had to describe her by two words. First Indian to win the World BWF World Tour final. She eliminated that third word that was earlier there for Olympic silver. So this is out of disciplined training which you have to imbibe in yourself. And the next point I want to say is, suppose I go to your office where you are doing practical training or I go to your neighborhood where you have your well-wishers, friends, relatives, what not. And I ask about you, what is your opinion about that boy or that girl? Not for matrimonial purposes, <laughs> just generally I ask. I want to suppose engage you or give you some assignment. I feel like asking, so I go and ask. Suppose the description is very good boy, very good girl, fine. Intelligent, fine. Hardworking, fine. Everything will make me feel happy, naturally. It will make me and you feel happy, those positive descriptions. But you know what description will not only make me feel happy about you, but also proud about you. One description which I would expect of somebody to tell about you is, this person, if a job is given, if a work is assigned, if a commitment is undertaken, come what may, without finishing it, it he will not rest. He will not give up. He will not abort it. Halfway through, excuses will not come. There can be hundreds of reasons for you not to do a thing. But there is only one reason you should do a thing. That reason is that you are capable of doing it and therefore you are doing it and you must do it. So that attitude, the attitude of crossing the finishing line under the most adverse circumstances, even in the worst case scenario, you will not go back to somebody saying, because of this I am not able to do this. You will find the ways and means to do it. So that is one virtue you should imbibe in yourself. Now, how do I validate this? 1992, Barcelona Olympics. There was again 400 meters race, but this time it is not under 19, it is Olymp Olympic, regular Olympic race. So, world over, all the champions of the respective countries, continents participated, and in the final eight again, there is the most potential probable winner of the medal, Derek Redmond from UK. He was running. And the track record showed he is the fastest among all the eight who are participating in the final run. And the race began and at 150 meters or 200 meters, when he was ahead of everybody else and the whole world is awaiting only for another 20, 30 seconds for him to stand on the podium to be declared as the winner, as the gold medalist for 400 meters, suddenly falls on ground because of the muscle string. Cramp in his right leg, with severe pain he falls on the ground. And actually your heart will bleed when you are watching that video, when everybody one by one overtakes him as he is on the ground, in pain, crying. Stetcher is rushed to the field, but he refuses and starts limping to the finishing line. Another gentleman comes running. Security prevents him. Nobody should go on the track. He says, I am his father. Then he is allowed. So his father comes and says, Son, don't do this. You will further injure yourself, damage further. So get on to the stretcher. He says, no, father. You only taught me you should never give up. I am not giving up. So he, his father leaves him alone. And this man limbs and limbs, no, very well knowing he is not going to win the medal. Nobody is going to give him a medal, but he reassures himself. I am representing my country 
and I have come here to run how many meters? 400 meters. I have not come here to run 150 meters, 200 meters. My commitment to my nation is to run 400 meters. So till I cross that 400 meter finishing line, nobody, no force on this earth can prevent me from running and crossing that line. With that determination he crosses. When he crosses, the 60,000 spectators in the stadium did not stand up and clap for the winners gold medalist, silver medalist, bronze medalist, but for this Derek Redmond, the whole stadium stood up and gave him a standing ovation. <laughs> Why? Why? Because that commitment of crossing the finishing line of what he undertook. History would have celebrated his name for a few months if he had won a gold medal and forgotten later. But today he is part of history for generations to come as a role model in what he demonstrated as a culture imbibed within him. So this culture of crossing the finishing line should get imbibed in you. Let me move to the next bullet point. One thing I find which is troubling CA students, one segment of the CA students at least is, I've never seen failure in my life. All through my school, college, every exam, every competitive exam, I have been successful so far. I have been rank holder so far. But first time I experienced failure in CA exam. And that destroys me, my confidence. Sometimes the failure seems to be for no fault of mine. Therefore, my morality is shaken up. I mean, the moral courage to pursue further, to fight against the odds is shaken up. These are all some thoughts of some young minds who face failure for the first time. So for those young boys and girls, what I want to say is, you know, greatest virtue of a champion is perseverance. Never to give up. Perseverance is, even when there are setbacks, even when there are failures, you have to fight back. You have to bounce back. You just, you are, see some of you feel that way, you know why? You think your personality is determined by that isolated failure, isolated setback. What, what is the image my friends will get about me by this failure? What my parents will think about me? What my siblings will think about me? What the neighbors think about me? What the society? So all that inhibitions, negative thoughts. Success introduces you to the world. Failure introduces the world to you. <laughs> Once in a while you should know what the world thinks when you fail. That will make you really strong. You will silently declare within yourself, I am, cannot be judged by this isolated failure or few lapses, setbacks. I am born to achieve. I am going to prove to the world that I am here to conquer, here to succeed and then fight back. When success comes, redefine your goals. When failure comes, redefine your methods. Redefine your approach, redefine your attitude. You will rediscover immense potential in you to transform failure into success. So that is what you will have to churn yourself and transform yourself and undergo that spirit of fighting back. So that is perseverance. And this need not, you may think it is happening only to me. It is happening to millions of champions across the world at different stages of their life. Actually, you are so young enough to be privileged to experience it once in a while if it happens. Not that you invite it to happen, but if inevitably it happens also, you are able to withstand and cope up. But it has happened to champions also. But still they have conquered because of perseverance. Let me give one example to validate this. Which is the most popular sport in India? In India, cricket is not a sport. It is a religion. <laughs> Across the religion, they like this religion. 
So, and who is the demigod of this sport? <laughs> I'm happy two, three names I'm able to hear. <laughs> so, but before few years, somebody who retired from cricket set many milestones, many records in the game of cricket worldwide. From India, one batsman set many world records. Who is that? Sachin Tandulkar. What is one singular record that appeals to you as something unique? 100 centuries. Now let me give you a simple analysis of Sachin's 100th century. When did he score his 99th century? Not part of the syllabus, so I don't expect you to answer. 12th of March 2011 in Nagpur against South Africa, he scores his 99th century. Now when a person, legendary person, who has been playing cricket at, from the age of 16, his total cricketing uh, life spanned over 24 years. 16 it started, 40 it ended. At the age of 40, it ended. So, when this was the factual position, and he has played so many innings where, in fact, if you look at the track record, data analytics, how many times Sachin Tandulkar has got out in 90s? 18 times. So for a person who has scored 99 centuries, who got out 18 times in 90s, scoring one more century, is it so difficult? No, it should not be difficult, isn't it? So next innings he goes to play. Whole world awaits him to hit the 100th century. He also goes with that motive of hitting the century, but he is getting out in 30s. Next, he is getting out in single digit. Next, he gets out in 60s and 70s. Every attempt, every attempt. Mission not accomplished. And when did he score his 100th century? On 16th March 2012, in Bangladesh, I mean, against Bangladesh in Dhaka, he scores the 100th century. And if you calculate the gap between 99th century and 100th century, he has taken 370 days. For CA students, only two attempts in a year. In 370 days, he had 33 attempts. Every innings is an attempt, isn't it? Yes. So after 370 days, 33 attempts, he is able to score the 100th century. You can imagine what kind of a pain he would have undergone every attempt he failed. Perseverance. Withstood him. He could have easily given up. I have achieved so much. Why? He did not give up. So even for a legendary personality, this can happen. And even a legendary personality achieves what he wants to achieve only by perseverance, by not giving up. So therefore, two lessons. I want to give you two messages out of this episode. What, is the, what are the two lessons you must pick up? First message, okay, perseverance is the main message. But within that, there are two sub-messages. First message is, When he f scored this 100th century on 16th March 2012 and the whole cricketing world stood up and applauded him, all those 370 days, 33 attempts were irrelevant. It did not matter at all. It vanished. It disappeared. Remember that. The moment you qualify as a chartered accountant, doesn't matter how many attempts you took, how many slips you had. It doesn't matter at all. You are a chartered accountant, that's all. And that is the goal that is achieved. It doesn't matter. 
second message tandulkar himself may not like this second message first message he like it but second message he may not like it his fans also may not like it but i want to give it to you because i like you and i want you to be benefited out of this message what is that message i personally feel this is my interpretation 99 centuries came maybe more easily to sachin tandulkar because he played for his country he played for cricket 100th century did not come all that easily because he played for century he played for scoring century the same message applies to you also when you aim at a target or a goal aim it for the passion of achieving it for making your you know principals teachers parents society nation to be proud of you be merged with that macro level approach not with a self centered approach that this will do this good to me no gradually you should transform yourself that you see even when you set up a practice i i set up a practice in 1983 and slowly i experienced initially it looks like you are practicing to earn your money your fees for fees you are working it looks like later it looks like this client is trusting me so i must honor and fulfill and meet his expectation so with that passion you start rendering services then comes a stage where i am a professional of a standing and if something is undertaken by me the delivery should be absolute quality and precision and professional without any blemish deficiency i should deliver then only i'll get satisfaction so it is my pride the professional's pride that is involved and later you will evolve to a stage where by whatever i am doing i am facilitating the growth of indian economy i am facilitating this merger i am doing this valuation i am doing this due diligence to facilitate an economic transaction to happen for the economy to grow for the taxes to be collected in my own way there was a french revolution and three cooks all the three cooks were doing exactly the same but when they were asked individually what are you doing here first cook said i am working here for salary as a cook second one said i am preparing quality food for the soldiers third one said i am contributing to the cause of french revolution it's all they were doing exactly the same but the perception with which they were doing was divergent and drastically different so it is left to you as to how you look at it how you so anything that you do do it with a passion the outcome will be automatic it will be amazing miraculous that is the message now moving on to the next bullet point ordinary to extraordinary how do you become can you be all of us are ordinary or extraordinary today can we become extraordinary tomorrow possible for that what you require is dedication so dedication makes you extraordinary over a period of time so that is the last but one bullet point i want to say for this i want to give a validation by a example uh, you know there was a young boy who was born in usa in the year 1985 and he took interest in the sport of swimming and uh, because he won the school he won the college, uh, i mean state events country events he felt the urge to participate in his first two olympics for him it is so delightful exciting when you are taken in, in the squad to go and participate in the first two olympics in 2000 what is his age 15 years so at the, at the age of 15 in sydney australia first two olympics he participates 
five events he participates the olympics gets over now he is boarding his plane to go back to us so he looks back i come here with so many dreams with so much of energy how many medals i have won can anybody guess how many medals he won big zero no medals in all the five events he did not come even the third position so no medals the closest he came was in one event he came fifth that's all he was completely shattered frustrated broken in heart two thoughts came to his mind in the flight from australia to i mean sydney to new york what thoughts one is positive one is negative what is the negative thought negative thought impulsively said you may be good locally but not internationally this is not my cup of tea forget about this it's so painful shameful to participate and go back without a medal it was haunting him and said forget about it here after no international tournaments just confined to your place and be happy with that that is negative emotion what is the positive emotion what are all i told just for perseverance i told you no that was telling him no i am not here to be judged by one olympic event merely because i have failed now it doesn't mean i will continue to fail no no i have to prove to the world by performing by ba bagging medals he goes the level of his dedication escalates with that vengeance with that urge desire burning zeal he starts swimming in the pool living in the pool breathing in the pool eating in the pool he dedicates himself to this sport of swimming then at the age of 19 2004 olympics in athens he goes and participates eight events six gold two bronze he le he learns he tastes success he learns how to achieve success he finds a taste of achieving success he sustains his dedication for the next 4 years and at the age of 23 in 2008 beijing olympics he goes participates in eight events in all the eight events eight golds and seven out of those eight events he sets a new world record for olympics he rewrites the record and one of those seven he wins the gold by 100th of a second the difference between gold and silver 100th of a second what is a second that is a second if you split it in 100 subunits you can imagine the you know that killer instinct to move ahead of others still the finishing line i mean it's a combination of all that i have told he demonstrated and therefore otherwise history would have said seven gold one silver he refused eight eight golds fine then th they, everybody thought abba here after he may not come <laughs> because there are teenagers who are going to come he is already 23 next will be 27 age old also he will not come no 2012 london olympics he comes back wins four gold two silver six medals he takes back okay he will not come again 
Rio Olympics, he again comes, five gold, one silver, takes back six medals. Now, what is the description world has given to him now? The most decorated Olympian in the world. He decorated with what? Medals. The most decorated Olympian in the history of humanity. Isn't it? Because how many medals have you counted? 28. What is the breakup? How many gold? <laughs> how 28 becomes 33? <laughs> 28 is correct. Split the 28 into how many gold? <laughs> 23 gold, 3 silver, 2 bronze, 28 medals. How many medals India has got in Olympics? India as a country, India is not an individual, 130 crores. India also has got 28 medals in the history of Olympics. Only difference is 9 gold, 7 silver, 12 bronze. That is the breakup. That is why, that is why now Prime Minister's office and Sports Ministry have set a target. 2020 Tokyo Olympics is too early to set a target. Let us improve, but work towards 2024 Olympics in Paris. What is the goal? 50 medals India should bring from 2024 Paris Olympics. Now, what is the strategy? Now, all these stories I am telling, please relate it to your CA exams. Everything has a connect with CA exams. What should be the strategy for your CA exam? You have to decide. What is the strategy for getting 50 medals in 2024? What is your strategy when you pass and qualify and come out as a chartered accountant? How do you come out as a complete personality with good articulation, communication skills, technological skills, linguistic skills, professional skills, managerial skills. Strategize. Invest your time. Don't spend your time. Invest your time. Like that, what is the strategy Indian government has adopted? They just took Africa as an example. African countries. Example. Up to a point, there were no medals for African countries. After a point, Every Olympics, medals after medals for African countries. This is studied. What is the strategy they have adopted? South Africa alone has 86 medals in Olympics. A tiny country like South Africa alone has 86 medals as against 28 for India. Why? What is the strategy? They picked up only two or three sports in which they have the core strength and competence. Confined only to that athletics, swimming, boxing. Just pick up where you have the core strength. Train your people and send them. They will bring medals. India has chosen 10 sports in which we think we have the core competence. Provide infrastructure. Invest in infrastructure. Take the rural youth from nook and corner. Train them. Groom them. Invest on them. Send them to Olympics. They will bring medals. So this is how it is, it is not just intelligence that matters. It is the strategy also that matters. Even in CA exams, even in empowering yourself with skill sets and journey of your life. So that is why every one of us can migrate from the status of ordinary to extraordinary. A teacher in a school asked the children, what is the similarity between Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Dr. Ambedkar, Mahatma Gandhi? There was a of silence like this. <laughs> One boy stood up and said, Madam, they were all born on government holidays. <laughs> Actually, when they were born, those days were not government holidays. Later, out of reverence to them, government declared those days as holidays. But you look at every one of them, initially they would have looked ordinary. But they transformed, they manifested into extraordinary, but what they have accomplished, what they have contributed, what they manifested into.
That is possible for every one of us. So that is the last but one. And the last message is one of your own. I mean, how many of you are aware that in CA exam also, uh, scribe writing is allowed for those who are physically challenged, blind students, physically handicapped who cannot write the exam themselves, scribe writing is allowed. And they are given for every one hour you are given, they are given 10 minutes extra. That means for you, if it is three hours, they get three and a half hours to write the exam because they have to listen to the question read to them. Suppose somebody is a blind student, he has to listen to the question. Then he has to dictate the answer. He has to dictate the steps and then correct. If the person has not understood, he has to repeat. So he half an hour more, grace time. So, are you aware of or have you come across any such student who has qualified? There are many students with those challenges, deficiencies, who are qualified. I met one of your own student, ailing from Andhra, I mean earlier Andhra, now Telangana and Andhra, who was fully blind, Rajeshekar Reddy. And I went to address Abu Dhabi chapter of ICI. His session was after my session. And he shared his experience of how did he qualified as a charter. That's all. That was his topic. Because those who were well settled in life, sitting in the auditorium, thousand chartered accountants in the entire UAE, wanted to... Now, whatever I am telling, I am expecting you to correlate it to your CA journey. Isn't it? They wanted to pick up the ECA journey and correlate it to their life, journey of their professional life. So, what in someone's substance he told, I'll tell you, and then with that, I'll conclude. He said four things that made him a chartered accountant. If those four things can make him a chartered accountant, I... I am sure it will make you also a chartered accountant. Not only a chartered accountant, maybe achieving what you dream. First he said, I had the aspiration to become a chartered accountant. While everybody else around me with no deficiency or challenge could stop at the school final level or college level, I said, I am not going to stop. I am going to do a professional course. I must become a professional. And I came to know that CA exam is a difficult exam and that interested me all the more and I got fascinated and I took up CA. So aspiration, I'm sure all of you have aspiration to become a chartered accountant, that's why you join, isn't it? So first ingredient or requisite is aspiration. Second he said, because it is challenging, I knew I had to work hard. That means perspiration. So aspiration alone is not enough. You have to do perspiration to achieve that aspiration. So I was determined not to give just 100% but 200% of effort. So second is perspiration. But even I was sometimes depressed started thinking, have I done the right decision? Is it possible for me to attend a one subject which I am unable to understand, so I have to take the help of a coaching. So to go from one place to another place, then board the bus, nobody will accompany. The stick is my guide and strangers are my, you know, facilitate navigators. So they'll tell me, you get down this, this is the stop, you get down, so I'll get down. Then which direction to turn and go, how to reach the classroom, how to go back to residence, all the challenges. So I used to think, is it possible? So voluminous syllabus, eight subjects, divergent nature, all that. But those were the times I drew inspiration by listening to success stories, the parents, well-wishers, teachers, seniors, my colleagues who motivated me, who persuaded me, don't give up, don't give up. I got this perseverance, that ability to cross the finishing line. 
So, aspiration, perspiration, inspiration kept me going. But ultimately, what made me cross the finishing line? He said, because I was blind, I did not know what is the condition in which we lived. But I had a sister, younger sister. Through her, I came to know my parents are so poor. They cannot afford three meals a day. But they managed to work and out of their earnings, make me study, make my sister study, give us three times food because we should not starve. And they had one meal a day. Rest of the time, they were filling their stomach by drinking water. And this I came to know through my sister. And then it ha haunted me. And I decided, by only by qualifying as a chartered accountant, I am going to transform the physical destiny of my family, the financial background of my family, the profile of future of my family. And I am going to destroy this poverty which is hurting my family and migrate my parents to prosperity. Therefore, mere aspiration, perspiration and inspiration is not enough. Desperation also is required. If not me, when am I going to pass? If not me, who else can pass? And I said, this attempt is my best attempt. I put my heart and soul with a vigor I went and performed. I came out successful as a chartered accountant. So that is what every one of us should have that desperation. Desperation to qualify. And that should be the driving force till you cross the finishing line. So that is the last take home for you, all of you I want to give. And my dear young friends, sky is not even the limit. You have immense potential. So if you introspect, discover your inner energy and follow these few bullet points that I've shared with you with some supporting examples, I am very, very confident that you are all capable of becoming extraordinary and champions in your own way. There are only three kinds of people in the world. First, who make wonders happen. Second, who watch wonders happen. Third, who wonder what happened. <laughs> to which category you want to belong to. You must belong to the first category and make wonders happen. God bless you. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This day will be remembered by all of us for our future guidance and the encouragement we all have received.